let's talk about AI or artificial intelligence. Now that idea or the recent news about it is striking fear into a lot of people's uh, hearts and careers uh, and view of the world and where it's going. And for others, it's bringing up a lot of excitement, sort of like a long held dream of being able to finally have conversations with computers and possibly uh, eventually sentient uh, creations of ours. So uh, I hope that this video will be the start of a dialogue uh, that you'll participate in. Uh, you can chat below the video or start your own writing about it or your, your own discussion about it because it's really, really important that each of us gets clearer and clearer about our stance uh, regarding AI and how we will be working with it uh, and how we recommend the people in our lives interact with it. Uh, just like, well, I'll, I'll give you this quote, which I, I don't think is hyperbole, okay? Time Magazine recently wrote this. This shift, the AI revolution, marks the most important technological breakthrough since social media. And I would go farther to say that this is as significant as when the internet was created. It's really that big. Uh, I am typically, I'll just tell you a, a bit about my history with technology. I grew up at a pretty young age using computers. I'm grateful that my, my home was able to, um, my family was able to afford that. And uh, over the years, I have tried a lot of new technology. And then in the past 15 years or so, I've become more and more um, skeptical about new technology. Uh, new software platforms, I see my friends and clients rush in, oh, try this new tool. And they tell me about it. And I'm like, relax. Most of this is just going to go away. You know, how, how many software tools have you used that went out of business or got taken over by something else and then stopped innovating? Too many to count. I mean, for me, I've tried so many. So I am pretty intuitive about technology because I've used it all my life and I've used it so much for business. I'm pretty good about choosing the right software to use because I, I have a sense of how these things work. And I've been really, uh, I, I, I was no, I'm, no longer an early adopter. If anything, I'm more like a laggard by this point because I'm like, ah, sure, you go ahead and use that new software for a year or two, and if I if it's still around, if I see lots of my colleagues using it, then I'll try, then I'll actually use it, and then I'll maybe teach it if it's really that good. This is the first time in, uh, let's see, since about 2000 and yeah, I mean, this is the first time since I started my business back in 2009. I started. First time where I cannot wait to be an early adopter because this is not going away. And this is the beginning of something really, really big. I was not noticed. I was I was down about crypto. I still kind of am. NFT craze, never jumped on board with that. Um, you know, whatever, whatever. It's like so many other platforms. I, I never jumped on because I could see that it wasn't going to last or it was kind of a deception. It was kind of a hype you know i'm i'm pretty sensitive about that stuff now but ai this is not hype this is for real and we each are going to have to contend with this because you can dig your you know head in the head in the sand it's going to come and get you uh it's it's coming for your job it's coming for your business it's coming for your work and honestly i'm not being this is this is not hype and hyperbole i really believe this no, AI will not replace human beings, but the humans who use AI will replace, in terms of careers and businesses, the people who do not use AI. It's obvious to me because it's, well, yes, the people who use computers versus the people who don't, who do you think is going to have an easier time running their business? AI, artificial intelligence, is like the, the advent of the computer. It's that big. 
and you could decide, well, you know, and, 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 and very importantly, it's growing and improving like a thousand times faster than the development of the computer. That's why I'm jumping on now because every month, major developments are happening ever since, <laughs> I can't believe this, but ChatGPT only came, as of this recording, ChatGPT only came out four months ago. And it already feels like ancient history to most of us who are, or who are using it and seeing it develop. Um, by the time you watch this, it, <laughs> I don't know when you're watching this, hello, future people, but this is going to seem quaint probably in two or three months, this video. So um, I am really interested to know what your reactions are about this right now, um, because the future is really open wide and it's going to depend on people like you and me to shape the development. Now, we're not, you know, neither of us are working for OpenAI or Microsoft or, or um, Amazon or whatever. Most of us watching this are not. But what we do in terms of how we use it and how we model its use to our colleagues and our friends and our family and our the children in our lives will shape how our community relates to it and uses it. So uh, I have a blog post as of this moment. I haven't yet posted it, but it'll be posted within the hour uh, about about this thing. But essentially, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, riff a little bit around my thoughts on this. And I again, I'm I'm this video is meant to start a conversation. So please do comment below. All right. So let me um, let me talk about where I see this going, and how I relate to the fears of the people around me, around AI. Okay, so where I see this going is that increasing amount of human work is going to be replaced. It's faster than we thought. I mean, we thought, oh, no, there's no way computers can learn how to create art. And then, of course, computers create art that's better looking than any of us can do. At this point, it's already doing that. Oh, there's no way computers can create music. Come on, artificial music is not going to sound very good. It's already creating music with with a few words. You can create songs like that that sound pretty damn good already. Art gone. Art is already not gone, but it's it's take it's surprisingly fast how fast that took over. Right? Shocked. No, no, none of us thought that would happen. I mean, few of us anyway. I didn't think it would happen, but it already happened. Um, any kind of writing drawing okay writing drawing photography and soon acting all of those are what i call raw creation right george what are you talking about you know you we all have to learn how to write we, we got to teach our kids how to write well that's old school thinking people you, you have no idea what's coming for you i mean what's coming for society i should say raw creation skills of writing drawing uh photography and acting are going to be old school, kind of like at this point, handwriting. Some, you know, do, do, is it important for kids to learn how to write, handwrite beautifully? It's old school. It's kind of quaint. It's like, yeah, it's nice if you can handwrite letters to grandma or whatever, you know, but it's like, okay, if you want to teach your kids, learn how to handwrite beautifully, calligraphy or whatever, versus learn how to type quickly and interact with computers, which one is going to set your kid up? better for their career. Okay, right? You, you see what I mean? Learn how to draw, right? Learn how to draw figures and and, and versus learn how to use the, the AI tools of drawing to instantly, within a few words, to envision a world that you want and the, the kind of um, tone you want to set and the uh, characters within, within a particular graphic. And then to be able to describe it and have the computer generate, which one is more useful for the future? Writing, drawing, old school. If, if I had kids, and I, I just, it's unbelievable to me that schools just a month or two ago were trying to ban ChatGPT. When I saw that happen immediately, and lots of people were like, that's right, we should ban ChatGPT. I'm like, are you, you you're not, you're, you're talking about banning computers. That's, you're talking about banning like Wikipedia or a calculator or internet searches. You can ban it for three months, but the people, the people are, are saying this is too good. This is too useful. It's too efficient. There's no way you can ban something that the people want. So, of course, 
the, the, those old school uh, teachers and administrators who try to ban ChatGPT, they're ridiculous because now the news is coming. I just saw this news a few days ago that teachers are now finding ChatGPT more, even more useful than the students. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's it came out in a, uh, an article. I'll, I'll put it in my um, on my blog post. Studies are now showing that teachers, 80% of teachers who use ChatGPT say it has benef beneficial effect for their lesson planning and their ability to teach their students well. And 79%, ironically, of the students said that it was beneficial, so like slightly higher than teachers. So now the administrators are like, sorry, uh, we were wrong. Um, we need to, we need to, instead of banning technology, we need to learn how to use it to prepare our students for the future. It's like, what are we doing banning technology? This is ridiculous, right? Um, the people want it, right? And so writing, drawing, not going to be needed anymore in the future. You can quote me on that. But dra writing, drawing, acting, sorry, and photography as well, not needed in the future. What's more needed here, here's, here's where the world's going. Here's, here's where creativity is going. What's needed is more human than ever. Yeah, no, we're not going to become, you know, robots and don't know how to, you know, connect with humans anymore. No, the people who win in the future, in my, in my view of creativity in the future, are the ones who have the widest and deepest human experiences. The ones who have talked to the most numbers of humans, not just talked to more people, but the ability to reflect deeply on human experience. Those are going to be the most creative people. Why? Because, and they, they don't need to learn how to, they don't even need to learn how to type anymore. The future is coming where, well, now you don't even learn how to type. Like you just dictate into your phone, right? That perfect, almost perfect dictation comes out. Who, yeah, obviously we all type still, but that's going to go away in probably 10 years. But it's like, no, what we need human beings to do is to experience a lot of life and then reflect deeply and, and empath, em, empathically on life. Actually, another interesting uh, field that's, that's going to be hard to replace is spiritual, spiritual channeling and spiritual, you know, because AI is not going to be able to connect to spirit guides. Not yet. Maybe, maybe uh, before long. Who knows? But that kind of stuff, it's like there's still a mystique around it that technology can't really connect to the divine source and all that, right? So, so those of you who are who are able to 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 do that have an advantage. Um, so, okay, so so get this: the the creators of the the authentic creators of the future have deeply ref, are able to deeply and getting better at deeply reflecting on the human experience. So, therefore, they have great empathy for humanity. And therefore, and also they have great imagination. They're able to say, well, gosh, given this is how humanity relates to these situations, these um, challenges, these dreams that humanity has, I'm going to envision a scene of a movie, of a, of a web page. I don't know if web pages are going to be a thing in the future, but I'm going to envision what this creation should be like to move my audience to a level of energy and emotions that that I I feel and and would like to to evoke and and connect with my audience around. So in other words, we are moving from raw creators, people who have to type like dummies and learn how to write and learn how to draw and photography and and acting. We're gonna that's gonna be old school. That we don't need to do that anymore. What we're gonna need to do, learn to do is go from instead of being a writer or actor or, or drawer, drawing person, you, you become a director. First, you become a curator. We've already been curators. Ever since social media came out, we, we were asked to become curators of interesting pieces of content. Oh, this link was interesting. Oh, this image. Oh, this video. You know, And the people we follow who curate the most interesting things, are we keep following them, right? So we've already been practicing curation for... 20 years, right? 15, 15 years or whenever social media, yeah, about 15 to 20 years. Now we are asked to move from curation. Keep, keep that. Every, every skill is like layered on top of you. We're asked to move from curation to direction. We're becoming directors. Of, uh, uh, it's like, I can envision this kind of art, this kind of piece of writing or 
this kind of software or this kind of program or this kind of website will evoke these kinds of experiences in, in my fellow human beings, the ones I want to connect with. So then I'm now going to describe it just using my voice soon, maybe. And this will they'll scare the hell out of some of you using you know, implanted chips. But anyway, we don't have to implant chips. I know some of you are really freaked out about that. So let's set that aside for now. Um, I, I tend to always talk about these things and then it happens like in the future and people are like, oh yeah, George was right. But, but it doesn't matter. We can use our words to describe a scene, a website, a software. We don't even need to learn, by the way, coding, learning how to program computers and code. That's going to be old school as well because now ChatGPT can code. Not, not perfectly, obviously, yet, but this is only ChatGPT 3.5. ChatGPT 4 is supposed to be coming within the next month. And then imagine five and six are going to be beyond what we can imagine. Four is already supposed to be able to use words to create video. Yeah. <laughs> Before long, by the time, so again, two or three months later, some of you are watching this. That's like ancient video that George is making right now. But before long, you'll just be able to use your words and go, I want to make a movie. I want to make a movie that, uh, I want, give me a three minute video where this character goes through these emotions because they're facing this challenge. And there's, there's, this, there's this particular nuance over here. And, and this conversation is about this and that. Go. And then within a minute or two, it'll generate a, a video with probably, at this point, it's probably more cartoonish. But give, give it three, five years. It's going to be you know, hum, humans that are so real with their... Already there's technology that, that, that makes video deep fakes, right? You, you've all, if, if you haven't seen this, this is one of the fascinating channels. Keanu Reeves deep fake YouTube channel. When I first saw it, I'm like, that's Keanu Reeves. What do you mean? That's not Keanu Reeves? That's no, that's not Keanu Reeves. That's a Keanu Reeves deep fake channel. I couldn't tell the difference. So that's all technology is already available. But in the next like one to three years, it's going to be democratized, which I know a lot of us are freaked out about the politics of it because now politicians can be deep faked and and uh, you have to have technology to be able, yeah, ironically, technology to be able to detect the deep fake. So it's always going to be this war between, you know, the 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 the, the technology that creates human like experiences and the technology that says, oh, that was created by a robot. And it's just going to be like this. It's it's like spam has has been right. Spam people get clever about spam, and they have spam detectors, and they just forever for the rest of you know existence just continue to 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 try to one up e e each other so long story short okay I'll, i'm going to end this video it's getting too, too long here it's already ancient news by the time i finish making this we need to learn how to work with it rather than bury our heads in the sand um it's not going the genie's not going to go back in the bottle and um oh let me let me say one more thing to end it in terms of spirituality okay some people think oh AI is going to make us less human or less spiritual. I'm like baloney. No, what, what are you talking about? Did 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 um? It's not about. Well, I did. I was going to say, did did the computer make you less spiritual? I don't know. Did it? It's a good question. Humanity will always adapt. You, I believe you, will always adapt. If you value your spirituality or your connection with other human beings, it's a, it depends on how, what you value, number one. And number two, it depends on your boundaries that you set with yourself and with technology. Social media, did it make you less social? I don't know. Did it? I mean, most of you watching this and interacting with me on a day-to-day -day basis, I wouldn't have met except through social media. Did it make me more or less social? It made me way more social. <laughs> I'm talking to people way more than I would have without social media at people that are much more interesting to me than my neighbors and the people I would have met just walking along this uh, along the street. Social media made me more social. Um, now I, I'm touching flesh less often, right? Hugging, giving people real hugs less often. You could say there's a problem there, but doesn't matter. Here's the bottom line. Technology will make you more spiritual if you allow it to. It'll make you more soulful and connected to the divine source and be able to be saved into the soul, you know, into the merge into divine source. If you allow it, just like social media, did it make you more or less social? You answer that question because it's about your values and it's about your own the ability to keep boundaries with yourself and with technology. 
So will, will AI make us more or less creative? Obviously, I'm going to let it, let, let it make me more creative because I'm going to become a director now rather than, oh my God, I have to find the right wording for this thing. Or, oh, I got to learn how to design, uh, design graphics now. No, I don't have to learn how to do any of that, right? I believe AI will make me more spiritual because why? It will free up so much damn time. It'll free up so much more brain power that went into learning how to type better and write and design and, and, and build a business. AI is going to do a lot of the business coaching for you. I'm, I'm going to be out of a job before long. So, so that's why I'm, I'm hurrying up. At, by the way, coaches, counselors, mentors, facilitators, beware. I'm not saying this as a fear mongering. Honestly, I'm talking to myself too. I already, for my clients, I already have an AI that knows all of my books and they can ask questions for, with a bot that has read and understood, all, not understood, understand my all, all five of my books. They can already chat to it. So I've already started building my own replacement. And before long, I think within a year, I'm going to have an AI that knows all my courses, that has watched every single video I've ever produced in, in terms of my courses. Knows all my, and you could just chat with it. Oh, George, um, how do you, I'm stuck on this Facebook ad issue. What do you think, George Bot? And then George Bot was, oh, I got it. You got to do this. You got to do that. Oh, the strategy is this. You'll be able to chat with George Bot in pop, within two years. I'll, I'll license it out. You'll pay, what, 75 bucks a month to chat with George Bot 24 7. You don't have to hire me or join my programs anymore. Uh, this, this, is, this is coming. And so all of us, you know, therapists, coaches, like, there's already bots that I've already been trying. I'm like, this is a really good therapist. This is a really good coach. I'm sorry. I mean, it's not perfect, obviously. It's not 100% you, but it's 80% good enough and it's way cheaper, right? It's like, why do I pay you when I could get something that's 80% good enough that's uh, you know, 10 times less cost? Why would people need us? That's why we need to become directors. That's why we need to really get our act together and go, okay, this is coming. What are we going to do to prepare for it? Because if we don't prepare for it, uh, we're going to be we're going to be we're going to be surprised by it. And um, really, the future for for coaches, mentors, counselors, facilitators, creators are going to be it's it's really the it's the future is in question right now. To be honest with you, and I think, but I'll and I'll end, end with this: we are adaptable. That I know. And so whatever next technology comes, the next iteration of this comes, I will be here, hopefully, to, to tell, to, to share with you what, how I'm using it and what I recommend, how we use it to add even more value than what we used to do in the past. Sit with someone, listen to their problems, listen to their goals, talk to them to try to change their mind about something or try to walk them through an exercise or try to do some, again, like I said, I think spiritual healing, that's that's a next level thing that AI can't reproduce yet. So spiritual healers, congratulations. You used to have something here before they figure out how to, but even so like, you know, chat GPT is pretty good at astrology. As far as I know, I mean, I don't, I'm not an astrologer. I can, but it's like chat GPT or and things like this. will will understand the internet and we'll be able to give you the kind of even spiritual guidance that basically is the amalgamation of all the spiritual experts and coaches out there. It's, so it's like, it's even though they might not be literally in tune with the guidance of the divine, right? Channeling something, it will be, it will be there. It's an illusion. It's a magic trick. It is, but it's going to, it's the illusion is so real for the consumer, for the client that they're like, okay, this is 80% good enough. And instead of paying you, you know, $200 an hour, $100 an hour, I'm paying, I'm paying this thing $30 a month. So you know, it, it's it's dem it's going to democratize. It's going to democratize coaching, and um, you know, therapy and counseling and facilitation and personal development. Essentially, it's going to democratize it, um, which means we have to be the ones that put in that train. You know, we become the directors and the trainers of the the technology. Where the tech, the content of the technology, where is it going to go? So. Um, I think basically it, the, the, this is either as scary as you want it, as, as you want to believe. It's also as exciting as you want to believe. It's how you want to take it. So I hope, uh, I think it's better for your mental health 
<laughs> our mental health to believe that we are adaptable and that, well, to understand that it's, it's, it's too convenient for it to go away, just like social media or just like, you know, the calculator or the internet, it's not going to go away. Um, you know, it, it's, it's people, people love it too much. It's the fastest chat GPT, if you didn't know this, has been, has set the record as the fastest growing internet service ever, faster than YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram ever grew, grew faster than that, got more, got to a hundred million users faster than any of those other services. Now it's at multiple, probably a, close to a billion already within a few months. So it's not going away, people. It's too convenient. It's too easy to use. It's too magical. And it creates the illusion that we think is real. It's not real. It's just predicting the next word very cleverly um, based on this giant database. That's all. It's not, there's, as far as we know, we don't know that. It's not sentient, sentient as far as we know. Who knows? Um, but it is certainly, uh, it creates the illusion that it is. And it's only, the illusion is going to get ever, ever harder to pierce through until at one point uh, there could, you could at some point argue that it has a soul. Who knows? So I'm really interested uh, in your thoughts. And uh, I really, I want to thank those who are already chatting. Um, Shweta, Erica, T, um, you know, Rebecca and Dina. <laughs> Thank you all for your chats. There are probably more than I'm not seeing here. I'm th those are the ones I'm able to see here. So uh, Tia Roja, thank you. Um, so I look forward to this conversation going forward. Let's, um, let's, let's become the masters of these tools rather than letting it master us. That's what I think we should do. So, all right, be well and uh, yeah, be well, <laughs> be human. And remember your values and your boundaries and use the stuff wisely. Thanks for joining me.